Hey guys, this is a quick showcase for my Lady of Strife from Creature Caster. I'm just going to talk a bit about how I painted this miniature and some stuff I noticed that might be useful to know if you're going to tackle this one yourself. Robo Shop. So, my starting point here was that I didn't like the official studio model's color scheme, especially the red skin. So, I decided to go with pale skin and blue for the carapace, but that ended up presenting its own set of challenges. I kept the skin fairly simple, as you can see. I base coated it with bone white from Vallejo mixed with a very small amount of burnt umber. This created a really good skin tone, and then I pretty much just did an airbrushed Zenithal highlight with bone white. The problem with this was that the shadow tone just wasn't dark enough, and I ended up with too little contrast, but I didn't notice this until I'd already started working on the carapace. I did add some shadows to the face and the ears with Agrax Earthshade, but I really should have started from a darker base tone. I did the eyes basically by applying a series of washes with Drakenhof Nightshade. That worked better than I thought. The first wash created an outline around the eyes that reads as eyelashes, and the following coats tinted the eyes towards blue, leaving a highlight in the middle. The lips were painted with the same shade of blue as the carapace and also a dot of Drakenhof to accentuate the separation between them. And that was it. Same as with illustration, painting women's faces is always a bit problematic because you want to keep things looking round and soft, and my approach to miniature painting at the moment is that I'd rather do something more simple than attempt something challenging and then totally screw it up, especially on a big project like this one. Anyway, on to the carapace. The base color for this was a mix of McCrack Blue and Administratum Gray. Then I did a pin wash with Drakenhof, followed by two layers of highlights on the bottom and three on the uppermost parts to make them a bit brighter. The goal here was generating enough contrast so that the detail would pop. Creature Caster's studio model probably has this bone white carapace because using a lighter color makes the detail stand out more, so I had to make up for the dark shade of blue that I had chosen with lots of highlighting. The rest was pretty straightforward. A series of washes to make the folds on the wings stand out, dry brushing on the horns and the claws, same on the rock. You can probably see what I did. Now, if you're going to paint this model yourself, I think the biggest issue you need to be aware of is that some of the sculpt just doesn't really seem to have been done with painting in mind. There are several spots on the model where it's just not entirely clear where one surface ends and another starts. You can see this in the pictures of the studio model where the person who painted it just created airbrush transitions instead of sharp lines. I really didn't want to do that, but it meant that I had to kind of draw my own lines in some places, and that got a bit dicey. It's especially annoying around the stomach. I would also advise against attaching the axe to the skull on the base before painting. The handle got into the way of a lot more things than I expected it to. You really don't see that at all as you're assembling it, or, well, at least I didn't. Anyway, I don't want to end on these complaints, so I feel like I should say again that I really like this model because it's just such a cool sculpt and the issues I had were really minor. This is a Creature Caster Mini, so it's top shelf quality, it's just maybe not as great as some of the more recent ones. Anyway, I've got three more Creature Caster minis ready, so I think I'll finally get to work on that King of War now, like I said I would uh, at the start of the year. Oops. And that's it for this one, folks. Don't forget to button the like smash, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.